bring in the two Davids now. We've got Bonson and Nelson, two of my favorite guys. All right, so I'm looking at Oppenheimer's. They put out a, a market bottom checklist. There are 10 metrics. So far, only three have been checked off. <laughs> but look how close some of them are, right? So, Bonson, you know, I mean, when I think about this, and I just talked to Ed about it, how much more damage does this market need to see? I mean, you know, people are looking for the perfect capitulation before buying. Well, the problem is that it's never perfect, that there's kind of mixed signals. And, and you've seen flows that have actually not helped the contrarian case, but then you've seen other price signals that have. I don't know exactly where it bottoms, but what I think is that it's not going to be one bottom for all asset classes at once. I think that some of the most expensive stuff could take longer and that there's other areas that probably have already bottomed. So we just have to be active and we have to use discernment. You know, to that point, uh, David Nelson, I look at NVIDIA and I look at a Clorox. Clorox is more expensive than NVIDIA. By the way, Staples, the only sector in the red today. So, you know, if you, I, I tend to agree with David Bonson, like this idea of a perfect capitulation where they ring the bell and we all jump in and live happily ever after. I don't think that's going to happen. I think David's right, and, and, and uh, I'm going to tag on to that. And look, I'm in your camp. Uh, I wrote a piece about this yesterday. I think the bottoming process, and it is a process that's likely already, already started, but markets don't have to be a binary of in, I'm in, I'm out. You know, the tape is kind of telling us where to go. I think investors are going to be forced to unlearn a lot of what they took for granted over the last decade. Like it or not, when rates rise, valuation matters. And even today, some of those very high multiple stocks out there like uh, Shopify and Datadog. Last time I looked, they were, they were struggling today. And to David's point, materials is the leading sector today with earnings acceleration and strong free cash flows, financials close behind. You know, Bonson, um, uh, energy top performer. You were there before anyone else. Kudos. You are killing it, absolutely killing it. But I did think about you today. So I'm looking at all these forward PE ratios, right? That's one of my favorite metrics. And believe it or not, energy is the one that's the furthest below its 10-year average. So, I mean, how much more room on the upside is there? Yeah, well, the reality is that there could be much more because despite the Biden administration releasing that silly strategic petroleum reserves, you now see oil back $20 a barrel above where it was when they made that announcement. So I think that we have a structural bull market in energy. And what is not being talked about, Charles, that I've talked with you about is midstream. Everyone's focused on upstream, the producers and the drillers. There is a lot of money still to be made for the pipelines. And so I see forward growth and it's the earnings PE ratio that you bring up, but it's free cash flow. Mm -hmm. may, they have more real cash generation. And sadly, they may have to hide some of it <laughs> before D.C. tries to take what, they, what they're making. Uh, David Bonson, what else are you looking at? Yeah, we like this old tech thesis. You know, a lot of people are saying, oh, is new tech, uh, the FANG names have gotten hit. Are they now cheap? And I'm sorry, they may be. There could be tradable bottoms in some of those names. But I just don't believe a stock that goes from 50 times to 30 times has gotten cheap. And yet I look at Intel, I look at Cisco, I look at IBM. They're boring. They're not hot, but they have very low valuations and they are growing free cash flow. I personally like those names even at the these levels.